All right, so here's a problem where I at first looked at this and I was like, how in the world am I going to find the eigenvalues? And then I asked someone for help and they were like, have you tried looking at the eigenvectors? And I looked at, and I hadn't really thought about the problem too deeply. And then I looked at them and I was like, oh, this isn't too bad. And it actually turns out to be kind of nice. So we want to determine the eigenvalues, determinant, and singular values of a household or reflector. Um, so for the eigenvalues, we'll also give a geometric argument. So that that's sort of neat. I don't I don't know if I like this as a like something that you would like assign students to do. Like it's much easier to assign a student to verify to do like a calculation. And the geometric argument is just something to like think about. I think that's really nice. But in any case, so um, yeah. So recall that a household reflector, okay, so it's just any m by m matrix of this form. So a household reflector comes from a vector v, and you just take the identity and you subtract 2 times v, v star. So that gives, so v, v star is a matrix, and then you multiply by the scalar 2 over v star v for some given vector v, and we're going to assume that v is non zero. Um, if you assume V is zero, it might technically still be a householder reflector, but it doesn't really, well, no, I guess, I guess it doesn't really make sense in that case. And I'll explain why, because of what we will see when we talk about the geometric argument. But anyways, so, um, so the singular values are actually really easy because H is unitary which we've discussed in the text about, which is a fact about householder reflectors. And so H star H is just the identity. We know that the singular, the non-zero singular values of a matrix are the square roots of the non-zero eigenvalues of H star H. But H star H is I, and I has M eigenvalues, all of which are one. And so, and so H must have M non-zero singular values, and all of them must also be one. And so we found all the, we found all the singular values. So that's, so that's easy, and you don't really need to know much about H other than the fact that it's unitary. And now we want to determine the eigenvalues of H. So first, um, the first thing that's sort of interesting is suppose you take some like, like if, you, if, if you look at this term, this term is sort of confusing here, and you'd like to sort of get rid of it if possible. You've got this V star hanging off the end here, and if you were to multiply that by a U, then you could just cancel this whole term out. And so that makes you think, okay, well, let's suppose we take some vector U, which is um, orthogonal to V. Then HU is going to be this times U, and so the U multiplies through, and then, like I said, we get this whole thing here, and because we have this V star U here, this term becomes zero, and so we're just left with u. So h of u equals u. So h fixes u, um, and so u is an eigenvector of h with corresponding eigenvalue one. Um, I guess I should specify here that um, u is not equal to zero, because um, it has to be non-zero to be an eigenvector. Um, but anyways, if, if we think about it, we can find an orthogonal base a, an orthogonal basis for CM containing V, and so it will be V and then U1 through UM, and so each of these UIs is going to be orthogonal to V. So we have M minus one orthogonal eigen, we have M minus one eigenvectors whose course, we have M minus one eigenvectors who are orthogonal here, who are orthogonal to V, and thus their corresponding eigenvalues are all 1. And so that in this way we get M minus 1 eigenvalues of H, and they're all 1. And we know that H must have M eigenvalues, and so we're almost there. And then for the last one, I was like, okay, so we've, so this is if it's if u is perpendicular to v, 
then this happens, so that's nice, and that takes care of like m minus one of them, so we're almost there. Uh, the next simplest thing is what what happens to v? Well, if you plug it in, um, let's see here, the v star, we get a v star v here, and that cancels with the v star v on the bottom, and so we just, and multiplying by i gives us a v, and then we're left here with just a minus 2v, and so we end up with minus v. And so v is also an eigenvector of h, and again we've assumed v to be non-zero. And the corresponding eigenva eigenvalue is minus 1. And so one of the eigenvalues of h is minus 1, and all the others are 1. And so that completes determining the eigenvalues. And now that we know the eigenvalues, we know that the determinant of, a mat of any matrix is the product of its eigenvalues, and so its determinant is just you take negative 1 and you multiply it by 1 a whole bunch of times and you just end up with minus 1. And so its determinant is minus 1. And so that's all we need to know. And then for a geometric argument, if you look back in the text and see like what, what are these householder matrices supposed to do, it's constructed to be an operator which reflects vectors across the hyperplane which is perpendicular to v and I'll just because I have to bring I have to mention it a few times I'll denote this hyperplane by h so it's an I, it, this is a hyperplane which is perpendicular to v and hyperplanes we, we remember are m minus a hyperplane in cm will be C, will be m minus 1 dimensional and so let's see here so again, if we have v and then u1 through un minus 1 being an orthogonal basis for cm, then these m minus 1 vectors must be orthogonal to v, and so they must all lie on h, because h consists of all vectors which are orthogonal to v. And so in particular, these um, these m minus 1 vectors lie on H, the, the hyperplane. They, all these, these vectors lie on the hyperplane, and this matrix reflects across the hyperplane, but doesn't do anything to the hyperplane itself. And so since um, these vectors u1 through um minus 1 lie on the hyperplane, they're fixed by the hyperplane. So um, what that means is that h u i equals u i for each i, and so each u i is an eigenvector of h with corresponding eigenvalue 1. As for v, v is perpendicular to the hyper, hyper blah. v is perpendicular to the hyperplane, so if you reflect across the hyperplane, you'll just be pointing in the exact opposite direction with the same norm. And so reflecting v, in other words, reflect reflecting v across this hyperplane h will yield minus v, which means that h, h applied to v gives you minus v, and so v is also an eigenvector of h with corresponding eigenvalue minus 1. And therefore, through this geometric argument, we've proven that one of the eigenvalues of h is minus 1, and all of its other eigenvalues are 1, and that's all that we need to do for this exercise, so now we're done.